What is going on guys? My name is General Mittens and welcome to my weekly news report. Now this is the first weekly news report I've ever done. So what I'm going to do in these videos is basically include every important piece of gaming news that came out during the week. So let's get started right away. First up, the GTA Online stimulus package is delayed again. Apparently Rockstar delayed it just for another week so they could fix the glitches that are still in GTA Online. Currently, we expect the next title update, 1.05, addressing player progress loss issues to be available sometime early next week. So yet again, Rockstar have delayed the promised stimulus package that they've, they've promised for about three weeks now. And I'm kind of angry, but I also kind of don't care in a way. GTA Online has to be one of the biggest launch failures of all time. Not because it crashed and took a few days to fix, but it, it launched incomplete. There's still, after three, four weeks of this being up, there's still no heists. The only thing that you can really do is buy stuff and you earn money by doing the same style of missions over and over again. So GTA Online kind of came and went to be honest. The only thing that it's really good for is just playing with friends at the moment. The next piece of information is from Ubisoft and they have announced that they are going to drop the online passes and this is following in EA's footsteps. Assassin's Creed fans out there might have heard or might have noticed that without the Uplay passport for Assassin's Creed 4 uh, the fleet management system in the game, in the single player, has been blocked from use. <clears throat> and that sparked a lot of controversy with having to have a Uplay passport, which is only for online, blocking out a portion of the single player. Now, it was only the fleet management, which is basically like the Brotherhood, sending the Brotherhood on missions. But that's still part of the game gone if you didn't buy a new copy of the game. And they have since announced, as I said before, that they are going to withdraw all of their passport program. It was announced on the UB blog. The company explains the reasoning behind the change in policy, and I quote, The Uplay Passport program was initiated as a means of giving customers full access and support for online multiplayer features, along with exclusive content, bonuses, and rewards. However, games today are blurring the line between offline and online, between what is single player and what is multiplayer. So there you go, what do you guys think of that? Uh, I think that's good, I'm sick of those passport systems, even though I buy most of my games new, it's still an extra code to chuck in. I've always seen passport systems like DRM, you know, they're, they're, they're meant to stop piracy, but they invoke more piracy, no pun intended. Now the third news story this week actually comes from Bungie. The Bungie community manager Eric Osborne has stated that Destiny won't launch on PC over fears of spreading Bungie too thin. Now there has been a lot of rumours that Destiny will be coming to the PC even though it hasn't been announced yet and it seems that those rumours have now been crushed. Now Osborne said it's a huge challenge to ship four platforms and a massive opportunity to reach a new audience. He's talking about both the PS4, PS3, Xbox 360 and Xbox One there. We know there are a lot of people out there asking for PC, and we know that there are a lot of gamers that would willingly give us money, but what we have to do is make sure we're focused enough to bring a good experience to any platform that we ship on. Now, personally, I'm not looking forward to Destiny, I have my own uh, reasons, but I can see that a lot of PC gamers will be especially disappointed in this news. Although, on the flip side, I do see what Bungie are getting at here, where they want to deliver the best experience on all four platforms. So they're not chucking a FIFA or a Call of Duty and just launching on every single console that is still being slightly used, even handhelds, and they're just focusing on the four main consoles. Personally, I believe that launching on just the four main consoles is a good move from Bungie. It's nice to see that a developer still cares about quality, Especially in this day and age where you're getting half-shipped games and day one patches, all that kind of crap. And it's nice to see that Bungie are still sticking to their roots and developing for the gamer. And the last news story today is that the Battlefield 4 crash and freeze issues on the PC will be fixed soon. DICE have stated that there are a number of bugs that they are actively working on. Now I personally own Battlefield 4 on the PC, I will be uploading my first impressions video probably in a few hours, or if not in a few days, and I have experienced a lot of crashes, a lot of bugs, a lot of uh, graphical glitches, a lot of lag, and it's nice to see that they are fixing the issues, 
but really, when this game is at a closed alpha, a closed beta, an open beta, and QA testing, this stuff really shouldn't be happening. Now, I'm not sure how this game runs on the consoles, I'd assume it'd be better than PC at the moment. Uh, I know that every single PC game that comes out will have optimization issues, but this isn't a problem of optimization, this is a problem of server issues. And also in-game issues as well. So there we have it, those are the news stories of the week. If you have any thoughts or opinions on said news stories, don't forget to leave a comment down below. Now for those of you new to the channel, definitely be sure to check out my first video which will explain everything that this channel is going to be about and all the content that I am going to be uploading. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.